What's up guys, it's Jughead here, just a down-to-earth guy trying to bring you some down-to-earth content. Welcome back to my Let's Watch Hunter x Hunter series. Today we're going to be watching episode 36 titled, A Big Debt and a Small Kick. Now, what the hell does that mean? What the hell does that mean? I have no idea. A big debt, I can assume, is going to be the debt his Gone is trying to pay back to Hisoka, giving back that badge big debt small kick maybe hisoka winning the match just like a that's how he's gonna beat gone i have no idea with a title like that but we're going to see so 35 was part one of the gone hisoka match so 36 is where it all culminates and ends and i've discussed last episode my prediction is that gone triumphed was able to punch hisoka in the face return that badge but Gone as a developing character is not going to beat Hisoka, nor should he beat Hisoka for proper character development. There's no way or that a 12-year-old kid who just mastered Nen, not even mastered the basics of Nen, like over a few month time span, should be able to beat someone like Hisoka. There's no way. You have you have to have some, you have to balance that triumph and that loss. For there to be growth so i want gone to lose like master roshi said there's always a bigger fish he didn't want goku to win in his very first uh budokai tenkaichi because it would get to your head or it would fuck up your care your your growth your personal development so let's not even keep talking in the intro let's just get into episode 36 and find out this big debt and this small kick let's go so Hunter Hunter, episode 36, a big debt and a small kick in three, two, one. Let's watch, shall we? Middle of the match, part two. It all ends here. Hisoka is sultry. Schwing. He is turned on. I really didn't want to have to see that again. I was hoping to put that back in the recesses of my mind entirely. Let's see this right hook, right here, right here, that bruise right here. Yeah, he landed a solid punch on him. Will he be able to win the match? No. <laughs> Ooh, critical hit. Hey, two, two to one, two to one. Don't matter though. Let's see how this all plays out. Just the tile missing. Wing is sweating because he knows Gon can get fucking seriously injured in a, or even die from facing Hisoka right now. Would Hisoka want to kill Gon though? I feel like is is Hisoka almost gonna hold back his punches? Referee is entitled to award points as he pleases. Some referees award points based on the amount of damage done, while some base scores on strategy and technique. Yeah, it's pretty much just like every sport: basketball, football, baseball. Yeah. Yeah, who the hell is this person? Is this the owner of Heaven's Arena? That was a aura if I if I ever seen one around him. Pretty boy. Like he just showed up out of nowhere. Are they just going to walk up to each other and Gon's going to be like, "Here you go." And then Hizoka's going to be like, the disrespect. Kapow! You know he's had that badge on him for ever since that episode, 20 episodes ago. It's gonna be scene. Is this gonna be my thumbnail right here? Here's the badge. There we go. 44. Here you go. Take it. Oh, the, the look on his face. Take it. You're proud of him. You're proud of him. I know it. Dude, Hisoka's face. Like, it's just, like, so impactful. Like, hits you. Almost goosebumps. Oh. Nice. Yeah, all the flashbacks. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. Yep, he knows he's an enhancer. You can just tell. A master of Nen like him? 
Oh, yep. Now that he knows he's an enhancer, you can use that against him, maybe. Is my theory going to be true about, like, you know what I said in my last discussion? Yep. And answers are simple and earnest. This goes exactly into the thing I was talking about last episode. Holy shit. Oh my god. I already have notes built for this. Emitters have short tempers. Specialists are independent. Dude, I already had this. Yep. Two of us are quite... Yep, because you're right. You're adjacent to each other. Our opposing personalities attract. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Calm down. Calm down. Transmuters are fickle. Yep. Dude, I literally have this in my notes that I prepared beforehand. Mere second for treasure to turn the trash. What I mean by this is I was talking to one of my viewers in the comments, uh, Christopher Rivera, and I was... Or was it Christopher Rivera or another guy? That... I was sharing my opinions about how personality affects your aura type and that each person shares the same personality. Like, there's no coincidence that Hisoka and Killua are both transmuters, for example. And I already had all those notes written out beforehand, even before this episode, because I had a feeling I would be able to use this in my discussion at some point. I didn't think it was going to be this episode, though. That kick was badass. I'm paying attention. I was just say, saying all that. He's going all out now. Gohan made the mistake letting him know that he's an enhancer. So there is a relationship between the adjacent uh, types. In that, is it easier for a transmuter to combat an enhancer, or is it harder? Or is it kind of an even playing field? Because they, they're opposite... Opposite to track. Yeah, now that you gave that badge back. Remember how I was like, yeah, Hisoka's kind of going to, maybe he's going to hold back his punches a little bit. Nope, it don't seem to be. Now Hisoka's going all out. Maybe because he knows Gon can, uh, Gon can take it. Especially as an enhancer. Three to two. Bitch, shut up. <laughs> we don't need you talking. Saying Gon is confused and everything. You don't look confused. <laughs> I'm brainstorming. Pause. Hold on a second. Let me think. Hey, he's too fast. Yeah, his eyes can keep up. We saw that with the... The coin game, but his body, that's a whole different story. What are you doing? Let's see more of your transmuter abilities. Yeah, use Gyo. See through his Nen. See through it. Ah, shit. Oh, that bungee, it's like latching onto him. The properties of both rubber and gum, it's literally sticking to him. That's cool. Oh, dude, this is like violin music. Oh, shit. Is he, he's gonna kick him in the face. This is gonna be that small kick. Oh, shit. Oh, nope. A punch is coming. Dodge that bitch. Dodge it! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Oh, man. What's going to happen? What's about to happen? What's about to happen? Is he... Ah. Damn. I thought I thought he was going to pull something out of his back pocket, but... Nope. Elastic love. Atla oh, bungee gum. I forgot he, he called it both things. Expand and contract. And detach and detach as I desire. That's such an OP ability, dude. <laughs> like, what? Bro. That almost, like, feels like an emitter ability. Like, 
projecting or propelling your Nen aura outwards, but to a point where it can literally stick to your person. Jesus. And it's still stuck to him. Yep. Bungee gum. Yeah, what you gonna do with that? Can he break through it? That would be badass. This is like some... Which is it? What's the curse in Harry Potter? It's the... Is it Imperio or Cruciatus where you can control uh, your foe? He's like... it's He's literally a puppeteer at, at the strings. Kind of plays into his whole like circus themed... Uh, personality almost. Uh-oh. When did I attach my bungee gum to your cheek? When he grabbed the badge. Dude, has it been ever present that entire time? Oh. Mm. Damn. <laughs> oh. Well. Oh. oh. <laughs> Look at Gon's face. <laughs> I love how even in such a serious moment, it can still make me laugh, you know? I like that. A good balance. Yeah, if you've been using Gil from the beginning... But how much does that deplete you? That has to be exhausting. Darn. Don't suffer the same fate as Castro. Oh, yeah. Like, what if it helped you in every other regard? You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yep. Fucked either way. True. He's teaching him in a way. I like that. Teaching in battle. He wants Gon to learn and be stronger. Or else he wouldn't be fucking sharing this information or like almost being a mentor. Not a mentor, almost. But, you know, sharing such information that a master has learned like let me bestow some let me hit you with some knowledge let me bestow some knowledge onto you like let's make this a more interesting fight or let me give you some stuff that you can walk away with that can make you stronger and hone in on your own enhancer abilities Are there people that can just break through that? Like, slice that off? Slice the connection? He can literally just pull him wherever he wants to, though. Like, you're at such a disadvantage. Oh, Hizoka is loving this. He, like, he... What opponent in the past has actually been like, Fuck it, you know? I'm coming to you. Okay, dude... Let's not cream our pants here. Let's not have an orgasm. Even though, just like one of my viewers said, Christopher Rivera, he made the perfect analogy of he... Hizoka views battle and combat like sex. That's literally how I can perfectly see this now. With Gon coming at him, now Hizoka's like, now I don't gotta let anything... T now I don't gotta spare anything. I can crush you now. He's a masochist just like Gon. He wants to... He wants all the... Yeah, hit me more. Until you... Until I reach this state, like I'm the fucking Hulk. <laughs> yeah, he wants he wants to attack the maximum strength gone. Yep.
I know exactly what Hazoka's doing. Nothing more satisfying than attacking your opponent when they're at their peak. But still, the fucking bungee gum is around on him. Yeah, he's getting used to it. Dude, imagine if he could just grab that shit and just pull it off. How badass that would be. Yep, don't let your fear overcome you. I like that attitude. Riddle for both sides. Balanced. I like how prolonged this fight is going. I'm learning so much. Yeah, what the fuck, man? Just like that guy said. The ref's doing what he wants to do. This guy is biased. Get him out of here. Oh, shit. Yeah. He doesn't even have to knock him down or anything. Just a clean hit. He's done so. Oh, shit. Oh, he's done. He's not experienced enough. He's still just a kid. He only knows the basics. It's over. Yep, it's over. All over. Like I expected. But a very admirable fight. Indeed. Like, nobody can be disappointed in this. Like, Wing's just happy going survived. Kill was like, dude, my homie is strong as hell. Damn. He can detach it completely from his own body and still be able to control it? Is that manipulator or something abilities that he, he's not as strong in, but he can still do it? Yeah, Gon, hey. You're officially a hunter now. And you literally went up against the strongest fighter you've you've seen. And you went up against him. Yeah, if we're in Heaven's Arena, you stand a chance. Out in the real world? Ugh. Whole different story. Dude, that's my thumbnail. Damn. That's cold. Shit. Yeah, lies on the line. Woo! Look at this art. Remember I was talking about this? Comparing it to Dragon Ball? That shit is clean. Yep. Close but no cigar just yet, but it's not like he's out of your completely out of your reach. You just need to train more. Like Goku. Hundred times gravity to face Frieza. You just gotta do the same thing. Literally, you mastered just the basics of Nen, literally like last week. Yeah, they're done now. Like, what does go... Yeah, fuck you, man. Huh? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Loser. Yeah, I get... Yeah, sure. I'm comparing this to like basketball, football, and baseball. I need to be comparing to this U to UFC, MMA, and boxing. Because refs do the same thing. Never mind. Yeah, but Hisoka didn't win 10-0, dude. Yeah, they're parting ways. Gon and Killua have no reason to stay there. That's a cool shot. Man, I love the color purple. Yeah, he was the one fighting. You were the one in the ring. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, now is the time to master your own styles. What kind of techniques are you going to be using? That'll be fun to see. Same. I'm glad we met this new character. I love that balance. Killer's just like, yeah, you're not going to do it. Gon's like, I can't wait for you to see you uh, improve. Now they're on to their next adventure. Yeah, I hope we meet them again. I hope we see them at the, uh, at the, um, auction. Or in the York New Arc. Maybe we won't, though. I can also see them kind of being neglected characters. Like, we see them for this arc, and then we don't see them past. That would kind of suck, but, you know, that's what happens in these stories. Oh, Gon's going home? Yep. We kind of forget that Gon has his own family. And Killua can meet Gon's family and be welcome into a no normal family. Yeah. Introduce your best friend. Bye bye Heaven's Arena. Are we officially done with this arc? Bye bye Heaven's Arena arc. We're we're moving on. Heavy metal music. You return the tag land of that punch as he promised. Now he can use his license. He met his goal. <laughs> So, time to discuss. My hair, first of all, is soaking wet right now because I just got out of the shower before recording this because Chicago just got hit with a blizzard and I had to shovel a foot plus of snow in my front yard, my backyard, parking space out in the street for my car. I was so sweaty and exhausted, so I'm a little tired right now. But And also, anybody who's living in Texas and going through what I'm seeing you guys go through right now, I hope you guys are safe and doing okay now but dude this episode was way way better than i anticipated originally i wasn't expecting the match to actually span the entire episode i'm very pleased with that i thought the match would end rather quickly 10 minutes tops to just cover like the first half of the episode now that the main climax of the hazoka versus Golden rivalry had finally occurred the match can just end now but it went on essentially the entire 18 20 minute uh time slot which was dope and learning some critical information about nen personalities compatibilities techniques and uh tactics which was uh, that's always a highlight for me remember i literally always say dump as much information at me as possible i'll find a way to absorb it all and comprehend it all i'd rather have that than have breadcrumbs to sift through but Plus, I get to now include all of my notes I wrote down even before watching this episode about my theories and my own analysis when it comes to personality and then dynamics. So I'm so pumped to do that. So let's just get into it right here. First off, who the hell was that silver haired, long locked, green eyed man who seemingly apparated out of nowhere into the announcer's box, dropping his two cents on the dynamics of the referees. He is obviously a man seldom seen or never seen before, as even the commentator herself doesn't recognize him. I want to guess he is maybe perhaps the owner of Heaven's Arena himself. I don't know. I don't even know why they would include a character like that. He, like, he can't be the Heaven's Arena master because everyone would know his face. It's also, just such a one-off appearance, so I almost want to say it's like some reference or Easter egg or something that I can't possibly understand. He appears for a mere few seconds, says his line, and then we don't see him again. He fucks off. There was no lingering on his face that shows and that shows in movies usually do to like indirectly tell you as a viewer, remember this face, because you're gonna see it again. Nothing like that. And we know our characters leave Heaven's Arena at the end. So this character cameo, mystery person, whoever, can't be important or very relevant because there's no way we're seeing him after this. We've left Heaven's Arena. We're done here. So 
maybe fill me in, any of you, if it isn't an actual spoiler or anything, just to check this simple question off the list. Who is this man? But moving on from that weirdness, randomness, Gon does indeed return that 44 badge back to Zoka, as we know. Hell yeah. His Soka, not having moved a single step up until this point, you know, just casually walks straight into Gon's direction with that smile on his face, and Gon's just like, you know, I'll meet you halfway. No need to walk that far. That determined look on his face that you know just got Hisoka's blood pumping for sure in all the best, worst places. I already knew Gon had that badge on him this entire time, literally keeping it close to the chest, right in his shirt pocket, ready for the day. I'm sure he never took it out of there. He knew, I gotta have this ready for the day. It's coming. There's no if to him. It's just an inevitability, and today was the day. I also like how Hisoka just accepted it. And like, am I the only one who in this scene felt like Hisoka gained much respect out of Gon for this? Like, I'm sure, like, surely he remembered what he said and did to him back on Zevil Island. And the more he knows Gon, he also had to know this wasn't something Gon was just going to drop or let go pursuing. But would, like, but would he accomplish the feat? Probably at some point, but this soon? Maybe that's what he was hoping for. That's why he met Gon at Heaven's Arena in the first place. Maybe Hisoka wasn't expecting that, or he was. Like, do you think Hisoka was purposely taking it a little easy? Let him punch him? I don't think so, because I don't think that's how Hisoka rolls. I don't think that's how he operates, to just not try or to just be hit for no reason. Like, he let Castro cut his arms off, but that was because he had his bungee gum technique already in play, thinking two steps ahead. Would also be bad in story terms to have Hisoka not trying as hard, and that's the only reason Gon landed a hit, as opposed to Hisoka taking Gon for granted in that moment, maybe, and he was actually trying, but Joan just Gon just legit outsmarted him and outquicked him. Maybe some symbolism there, too, when Hisoka, you know, does his magic with the card in his hand, duplicating the badge, and they all disappear, almost like it means nothing to him. Done and gone. What's next? Well, to Gon, he's having these flashbacks. He remembers the day with great detail. It means so much more to him than it does to Hisoka. And, you know, just while to Hisoka, it was almost just a means to an end to get Gon to train and be stronger and push him like it was a catalyst or an accelerant that he planted on purpose to get to this day he saw coming himself. So if anything, maybe he had Gon's best interest in mind, almost like a Master Roshi, always a bigger fish, got my badge, probably going to be a hunter, but I'm going to knock him down a few pegs, remind him that the real world is brutal and unfair and emotionally traumatic, knowing that he's going to rise from this. Eventually, I'm going to meet him later on. He's going to get stronger. He's going to develop a thicker skin. He's going to gain more experience and will all be to his benefit being stronger than he was before. And the reward for Hazoka is he gets to face off against that new, stronger Gon. I also love how Hisoka moves in between playing and teaching, and always a trick in play. Gon makes a mistake here. Hisoka keeps making sure to expose Gon to his weaknesses so he can be aware of them. First was asking Gon how much Nen he knows, and then telling him, he, oh, you must be an enhancer, and Gon asks him, how do you know? Boom. Never do that. He might have, like, he might not have known, but now he just went and gave the answer away. Oldest trick in the book. So Hisoka knows you know all the basics, such as something like Gyo. So now he knows to take that into account. He learns Gon even knows what an enhancer is. If he asked him how he knows, that tells Hisoka he knows about the diagram and the different aura types. So he knows he has mastered the basics mastered Hatsu, performed his water divination, found out he's an enhancer, and probably now officially a hunter, if he has all this knowledge of the hunter exam traditions and everything that goes into place here. And I assume Isoka already performed a water divination on his own way back when to discover he was a transmuter and when he trained in Nen himself. So he knows the extent to Gon's Nen knowledge, and he now knows Gon is an enhancer, so he knows where Gon lies on the hexagon relevant to himself. That must be valuable information. Like, Hisoka even tells him, you need to do a better job at keeping secrets. 
almost like trying to indirectly teach Gon, just like he taught Castro back in his fight. Remember, Hisoka balances this mixture between play and school, playing with Castro, taunting him, but also teaching Castro about his techniques, filling him in how he was able to see through his conjurer abilities, telling him he should have remembered the basics. And what does Hisoka ask Gon right off the bat? How much of men does he know? The basics. Boom. I made that connection there. So Gon is in a better position than his previous opponent, Castro. Won't suffer the same fate. And this is where Hisoka gets into the interesting bit, the part I was most fascinated and hyped for. Because once I learned from Wing's revelations and teachings that there are six different Nen Aura types who each one of our characters was, and the fact abilities are tied to personality in a sense, I immediately started brainstorming in thinking deep into this and started writing notes of my own on this theory, how it's no coincidence to me, for example, that Hisoka and Killua are both transmuters. Why characters like Korpika I predict to be conjurers. Why Gon and Wing are enhancers. Why I can see Leorio being an emitter. I literally had these notes written down a week ago, preparing for the day it's hopefully re revealed in the anime to be canonically in to be canonical information. I just wasn't expecting to receive this so soon. That's what blew my mind. I wrote my notes at the perfect time, apparently. Zoka knows Gon is an enhancer because enhancers by nature, that's important to me, by nature, through using a method he devised himself using personality to classify or a type, who better to even run this experiment in the first place? Like a scientist gathering all of this data for his own research study of sorts. Someone who literally loves fighting so much that it is like almost like sex to him. He is a sex addict and that he is addicted to violence and combat as the two both seem to hit the same pleasure centers of the brain. Who would be able to gather that much information to be able to devise an accurate enough assessment of Nen relative to personality? Why, of course, the one who has probably fought hundreds, if not thousands of opponents himself with a very analytical and observant mind who picks apart every inch of his opponent to find weaknesses and identify strengths. The fighter of all fighters, it seems to me, the one who has developed an entire philosophy around combat and altercations. Ahsoka knows what he's talking about. He's probably encountered hundreds of enhancers and through that he can confidently and accurately state enhancers are simple and earnest pointing directly to Gon fits the bill perfectly that's how he knows what Gon is if you know your opponent's nen you can predict and strategize and prepare for a certain class of attacks and defenses be aware of compatibilities etc so of course Hisoka would have an acute sense for this he reads Gon like a fucking coloring book. Isoka continues to just share his entire like secret trick to knowing who's who or what's what. Again, like I said, just getting these huge vibes off of Hisoka that mix between play and teach. Just as a transmuter is very deceitful and cunning, it's like he's using such deceit and cunning in a good way, teaching Gon without it feeling like a lecture or school. Like he knows, where better does Gon probably learn when he's in some shit, when he's in the action? Even though, I guess not really a secret because both Killua and Zushi could hear from the stands, both Killua and Zushi are marking how Hisoka is exactly correct in his assessment since Zushi knows Wings, Wing as a person very well and Killua kn knows Gon as a person very well. They can judge. Hisoka then openly tells Gon he himself is a transmuter, fickle and dishonest, exactly as in my notes how I describe transmuters. Zoka continues down the list. Emitters have short tempers. Well, would you look at that? I predicted Leorio is an emitter who has the shortest temper ever. Fucking Leorio. Seals the deal for me. I'm chalking my prediction up as a win already. Leorio is for sure an emitter. I'm too fucking good. Specialists are independent. Hmm. Who did I say could be a specialist? Korpika. Is Korpika independent? Well, 
I'd fucking certainly say so. He's the last of his entire clan. He has no one. I'd say that calls for being independent as hell in order to survive and succeed. Conjurers are high strung. Now, I also believe Kurapika is a conjurer. Baseline conjurer and specialist when the when the scarlet eyes come out. Would I describe Korpika as high strung? I would say so. Depends on your definition of high strung, I guess. Like to me, high strung means to be a perfectionist, competitive, very disciplined, not uptight necessarily, but just kind of urgent, scheduled, maybe nervous, but not like. The actual defi- it's the actual definition of nervous, not what we think of as nervous. A little sensitive, maybe, too. I would definitely describe Kurapika as seeking some sort of sense of perfectionism. He is very competitive and incredibly disciplined and stoic. I would also say Kurapika can be sensitive. His entire scarlet eyes come about as a result of a heightened emotional state. You saw him get upset and beat down against that mysterious Nen user we now know to be his teacher. I think that fits. If anything, he conveniently teeters the line between specialist and conjurer. Manipulators are argumentative. This one, all I have is Zushi to go off of right now. When we don't really see him much, I can't describe Zushi as pure, like, argumentative, like, for sure. I've mostly seen him as the attentive, loyal student to Wing. I haven't seen him talk back to him. Maybe gets into some banter between Killua, I guess. You could call that arguing, but I don't really have a strong connection there for manipulators. But here's where I'll share my own notes. I wrote like a week or two ago when this concept was first presented to me by Wing's subtle explanation of it last episode. I actually shared a snippet of it in the comments of episode 35 in my convo I had with Reb Abuhin. Apologies if I mispronounced your last name. I hope I'm cor correct when I say that sounds Filipino to me. So if so, shout out to you, brother. Forgive me, despite having quite a few Filipino friends, my pro my pronunciation with uh, Tagalog is not good. But yeah, I was talking to him about it uh, in our convo, and I'll start with transmuters like I shared with him. To identify a transmuter to me, they can most likely be regarded as an outcast, a misfit, the odd one off, a weirdo, maybe a trickster even. Both clever and cunning, but I'm sure one could find the irony in that they might often find themselves prone to their own devices, both the deceitful and the deceived. The trickster easily tricked. Those most likely to put on a mask in order to hide their true selves. The most genuine essences that is their personality and being behind a well thought out and constru uh, constructed facade. I'd guess even by those closest to them, if there are any of those that they even let close, their true feelings and or intentions are just as likely unknown if even if they don't adorn the mask. Therefore, I see transmuter abilities and techniques as highly unpredictable, just as they themselves are, and even more so unique because such techniques derive from and reflect the personality. Add Hisoka's fickle and dishonest, and I'm confident this is a perfect description of transmuters. This is exactly how I view Hisoka and Killua. I got my own device to tie personality to Aura, so top that, Hisoka. Moving on, what did Hisoka say about enhancers? Simple and earnest? Exactly what I believe. Determined, simple. Hard for one of them to lie or at least not tell the truth. You will always find that they wear their heart on their sleeves. Transparent, they hide nothing, they welcome all, and above all else, they are extremely and admirably straightforward in their thoughts and actions. Almost to a fault, but one can't help but be won over by them as a result. These straightforward words and actions, however, revolve around emotions. Enhancers are dominated by emotion. Just as they can easily win someone over, enhancers also possess negative traits, easy to leave sour taste in the mouths of others, such as being selfish. This trait is most noticeable as enhancers 
are probably seen as extremely goal-oriented and focused. Therefore, one can expect most enhancers to wield relatively and typically simple, little nuanced ten, uh, Nen techniques. Atsu is probably their best friend, knowing Gon well, seeing Netsuro at the top of the hunter food chain, coming to learn wing better, and predicting Gon's father Ging to also be an enhancer. You can see where I'm coming from in this assessment, how I describe an enhancer. Isoka actually used a great word for conjurers, high strung. I wish I thought of that term when I originally wrote my notes, because conjurers probably really are. Just as I said that they are more serious-faced, incredibly disciplined, maybe not so much the life of the party, but the one you can count on to be the rock you tether yourself to. Just as I described Kurapika earlier, conjurers can also be seen as overly stoic. You can also sense that they are almost always on their toes, ready for anything, like a feline in the wild, their ears, you know, when they move around and adjusting for the slightest adjustments in sound. This makes them trepidatious, not anxious or too nervous, but cautious, careful. Because of this, no one is more observant than a conjurer. Hoping for a conjurer to fall into your trap is probably a futile effort. You can't out-logic or out-rationalize a conjurer. If you're thinking a step ahead, you're probably still two steps behind. Enhancers and conjurers, probably rarely on the same wavelength, running on the same game plan. Conjurers being adjacent to both transmuters and specialists, probably keep themselves emotionally distant from others, a byproduct of their independence and their privacy. Through these traits, Know that whatever a conjurer might manifest through their aura is entirely deliberate and purposeful. Couldn't be more thought out and thought through to suit them and complement them in a perfectly practical fashion. Emitters. They stand out in contrast to conjurers for sure, but slightly in tune with enhancers. This is because emitters lack patience and emotional discipline and are not ones for detail. Logic and reason are not their forte. Rather, emotion drives them to react quickly and explosively. Being adjacent to enhancers, I can see the two sharing similar traits in an impulsive decision-making and impulsive, emotionally charged, and Nen techniques similar to that of enhancers. Emitters, just like enhancers, probably use more basic techniques deriving from Hatsu, Though, while enhancers like to keep things up close and personal, emitters prefer to use techniques that give them the edge in long range. Manipulators are stubborn and sometimes not the easiest to get along with. As Hisoka says, the ones who start the arguments. I see them being a one-man army. If emitters and enhancers are the emotional duo of the six, I like to think conjurers and manipulators balance it out by being the logical ones. On the flip side, adjacent to specialists, manipulators most likely share traits in independency and individuality, moving and progressing as they please at their own pace. Not so stubborn that it's their way or the highway, but they'd rather be alone than follow another and be on somebody else's schedule or clock, you know? Not so much goal-oriented, perhaps like enhancers, but manipulators know what they want and they know who they are. They're albeit stubborn and a pain in the ass, but they're arguably the most loyal companion, nothing they probably care about more than their friends and their family. And while manipulating living things could be the more aggressive and assertive route, versatility comes in controlling the objects around them to much greater advantage, I think. Specialists, like both I and Hisoka describe, independent, a true individual, one with themselves. They know who they are just as manipulators do, though specialists carry an inspiring amount of charisma with them. So not only for their abilities do they stand out in a crowd. Being so individualistic and being adjacent to conjurers, they are likely incredibly private. Few friends, or at least those brought close to them, are in very few numbers. Little to say or share of any personal substance, but that charisma that emanates from them doesn't fail to attract others 
and draw the draw them in, surrounding themselves among other people, and blending in as one amongst many. The standout trying to stand in, and due to having specialist abilities, most likely only possess one singular Hatsu technique that is unique to them. That is my in-depth analysis into each one of the six Nen Aura types in respect to personality. I knew it had to be a thing. I'm glad we heard it from Hizoka. He seems to be the one filling me in and teaching me a whole lot about Nen here, like he is with Gon, but I just wanted to expand on it a little bit more on my own. I had these notes just lying around, didn't think I'd use them in a discussion this early, but you know, here we are. Compatibility is also something I'm very con curious about. I was going to say confused. I'm not confused. I'm curious about another topic I brought up in last discussion, but I was kind of all over the place, you know, might have sounded crazy or a little bit dumb or a little out there, a little out of pocket. Um, gist of it was I asked whether certain aura types have compatibilities or incompatibilities with other types, such as does being an enhancer affect your ability in fighting emitters or transmuters, the two adjacent to you? Is it easier or harder? Are you more compatible as a result of being adjacent? And if so, what does compatible even mean in terms of combat or conflict? Ahsoka kind of goes into this. Hisoka is a transmuter. Gon is an enhancer. The two share adjacent aura types, though not so much adjacent or similar personalities quite the contrary actually as hisoka admits but he says the two of them are quite compatible just like they say in relationships opposites attract though i'm confused what hisoka meant by we could become very intimate now you can insert all the weird looks and jokes to your heart's desire here trust me i know first time you hear that sounds pretty fucking weird on the surface out of context, of course, but I want in context. I want subcontext. What could be meant by intimate? Like, due to their compatibility, their combat could get quite intimate. Like, they could really get into it, not as easy of a match, their techniques complementing each other or serving as direct counters. I almost relate the word intimate to messy, dangerous. Like, Gon is. Harry and Hisoka is Voldemort, both wands with cores from the same phoenix, like in the graveyard. Remember, they fight and it just fuses together, like Hisoka trying to tell Gon if an enhancer and a transmuter really went at it, it could be destructive and intense. That's how I interpret the word intimate. But how do you interpret the word intimate? Where does your mind go hearing a sentence like that? I want to, I want you to let me know how you think of that. I want to hear your opinions because this is very ambiguous. Again, it sounds to me he's teaching Gon to be careful, giving him a warning. He even tells Gon, do not disappoint me. Like he's speaking like a superior, a master, an elder. And he just looks like this fucking Goku Kaioken times 20, the magenta aura surrounding him. It was so fucking sick. And dude, I thought Gon picking up a tile above his head and throwing it at his opponents was impressive. And don't get me wrong, he's a 12-year-old for crying out loud. It's impressive, all right. But Hisoka being so strong that one kick, the force from the kick, like the thrust and the gust and the force, lifted up an entire tile and sent it flying well past the edges of the ring and all the way past towards the entrance like jesus christ is that what that small kick in the title of the episode is supposed to mean like bruh but it is super impressive how agile gone is sorry for my yawns again like i said earlier i am exhausted from all the shoveling i did but like you're going up against hisoka and gone is doing all right in keeping up speed with him hisoka is chasing him and gone is able to 
dodge Hisoka's attacks just in the nick of time, but he can't keep this up for much longer. The senses and the body are not equal. We've seen Gon's eye. Against Goto back at the estate carrying the group in that coin game, like, don't even call him Gon, call him Mochila, because he had them in his backpack, carried them to a win by using his super fast sight to see right through Goto's coin game and keep up with him. But here, it's a whole different story. You can't even compare the two instances. Even that super sense can barely keep up because the body is even slower. What you see with your eyes, your brain then has to process, has to react upon that information and send those signals through your nervous system to the rest of the body to actually move. Those are microseconds or milliseconds of compute time, but against the likes of Hisoka, that ain't gonna cut it. You gotta be even faster than that. And thank God for Killua, right? It's like, if it wasn't for Killua yelling out to Gon to use Gyo, would he have remembered the basics in time to utilize the special Ren technique, what Castro failed to do and remember himself? It's like, Hisoka almost like went slow enough bringing his finger up to allow Gon to figure it out to use Go Gyo and detect it. Like, what does Hisoka care? Just because you see it don't mean you understand it. He's a transmuter. He's a trickster. He's fickle. Gold can turn to trash real fast. Isn't that what he said to Gon? Gyo ain't gonna help you. And I have to say, Hisoka's bungee gum is fucking cool, okay? It is so versatile, like, almost overpowered. Like, what the fuck are you supposed to do against something like that? And then, that can literally change its quality of substance to stick to you. Literally kind of tying back to that symbolic image of the butterfly getting, getting trapped in the spider web back on Zevil Island, if you remember that. Gone's trapped here, and it almost makes me wonder what other classes is he in incorporating into this technique is it only transmuter like what else goes into not only changing the quality of your aura which is pure transmuter but then directing it away from you in a straight line exactly where you want it to go right on target and have it stick to your opponent and now you can just play as the puppeteer moving the strings around it's insane and again i'm gonna point it out each and every time it's either pure confidence or trying to teach. He tells Gon he should do better at keeping secrets when Gon revealed he was an enhancer, yet he openly tells Gon this is my elastic love, also called bungee gum. I can expand and contrast my aura, attach and detach at will. Like, like I just can't decide whether it's Hisoka just being confident and boastful and sly, you know, demoralize your opponent, or deciding, hey, you know, why not teach the kid? Drop some knowledge on him before I defeat him. It's just one of those cases where if Gon were more experienced, actually had techniques of his own to use, the story here could be written entirely different for him in another timeline. He returned the badge, but he's still just, he's too green and wet behind the ears to actually be any sort of competition to Hisoka. Like, there has to be an enhancer technique that Gon can develop that can cut through his nen. Enhancers can strengthen themselves and other things. Literally, all I was thinking of is it like, okay, there's this string attached to me that I can't get off. What's the first thing I think of doing? Cutting that motherfucker off. Cutting myself free. How do I do that? A fucking knife or something. Okay, I'm not a conjurer, so I can't just manifest my aura into an actual knife. Damn. I'm not a manipulator, so I can't control Hisoka somehow to force him to stop if that's even possible, again, damn, okay, well, I can strengthen myself, like, a lot, what if I use myself to cut through it, I have a hand, what can a hand do, let's just think of all the hand actions and motions, I can fucking chop like an axe, let me channel all my fucking aura into my fucking hand, advanced Hatsu technique, use this imagination of mine here, turn my hand into a god level, strong as fuck, karate chopper, sharp as a fucking knife, fuck a katana, I'm a samurai and my blade is my hand and slice through that shit with my own goddamn hand. That's what I would do. But then again, if I'm gone in this point of time, I've had no time to sift through my 
12 year old imagination and develop any techniques yet. So I'm fucked here. And Gon is fucked here. That's why Gon loses. I said there's n zero positive character development. What the hell did I even try and say? There's zero positive character development here if Gon wins. Because that's just plain stupid. And it just throws everything out the window. Here, Tagashi is slowly showing us Gon really has no chance. The question now is, when is it all going to end? We almost want the referee uh, to, you know, end the match. And Hisoka being Hisoka, rather, Hisoka being a transmitter, does exactly what he told Gon he would do. He literally told Gon who he is. He tells Gon, hey, I'll give you a free hit if you can guess how and when I managed to latch my gu bungee gum onto you. Gives him three options to choose from. Gon chooses the third. He's incorrect. Turns out it was the fourth option when he was trying to, when he was giving his aura personality analysis. Again, the mix between play and school. He taught Gon his analysis, one to both teach him, but also to distract him. He's always playing to his own advantage. And what did Hisoka fucking say in that analysis? Transmuters are fickle and dishonest. He literally told you he's dishonest. And you get and you getting mad, he tricked you and played an unfair rigged game. You played yourself. He taught you. If you listen, you listen. If you don't, you don't. He taught you and then he played you. This combination is my favorite aspect of this episode. It's just done so well. Literally, when he pointed to Gon, calling him an enhancer and describing him, he was teaching him valuable information, distracting him, but also he has this ulterior hidden motive. Isn't that exactly how I myself described a transmuter? Hisoka even played me too, just like Gon. See, like I see the world through Gon in a way. Like even Hisoka taught me by running back through his match with Castro, showing and explaining how he uses bungee gum, the pointing and directing. Even my dumbass didn't even equate it when I saw Hisoka point that at Gon, that that would be him casting his bungee gun. Like, I'm so dumb too. I was so unprepared. So, Hisoka still keeps coming with the warnings and the teachings too. I love it. Just learning so much from it. L really puts in perspective how unbalanced this match is. Like, he's beating Gon physically, but also mentally. Like, you're so in control of this match that you're just sitting back and just telling your opponent everything, just filling them in on everything. Like the inevitability of Gon's defeat is for sure. Gon is upset he wasn't using his gill from the start and Hisoka gives him a warning, almost like, hey, you know, don't beat yourself up for not using Gyo earlier. It wouldn't have done you any good, which it wouldn't have. Hisoka would know when Gyo, Gon was using Gyo and would have just instantly adapted to some other strategy. He presented the first three options in the original trivia question. Those three options would have been the three other ways Hisoka could have attached his bungee gun to Gon's face. And Gyo doesn't help you at all in the middle of an actual attack. Like, Hizoka literally helped go and realize all of his weak areas where he was most vulnerable by literally listing off the three easy places and moments he could have gotten him with the bungee gum. Like, oh, you think you played your defense well? Good? Well, here's three easy-ass moments I could have easily attached my bungee gum to you, even if you were using Gyo. And it was even easier in the fourth moment. Teaching and playing, teaching in school, teaching and humbling, teaching and humiliating, all at the same damn time. It's literally just Hizoka presenting the case to Gon. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't, uh, to be frank. to Your fate was pretty much sealed as soon as we both stepped foot in the ring. You'd literally have to go absolutely perfect against Hizoka, dodge every single one of his attacks in order to prevent his bungee gum being attacked attached to you but even wing is like yeah defense would have done nothing so it's damn next to impossible and re not damn next to impossible it damn is impossible for someone like gone but i really love this sequence that came next hisoka thinks with all of this talk all this doubt he he thinks he sits in his opponent's mind breaks them from the inside out like he did with Castro, who kind of just had a meltdown and died pathetically. He thought the same would happen here, but no, 
gone. We fucking love this kid. Says, fuck it. Defending doesn't do anything. I can't dodge everything. What's something no one else would do and Hisoka would expect the least? Oh, yeah. Fucking charging him head on, ready to beat his ass. And Gon has that pissed off look on his face, determined, out to hurt, out to deal some pain, out to draw some blood, out to serve some good old tasty knuckle sandwiches. And you see Hisoka's face of shock, like a face either telling us that Hisoka wasn't expecting or prepared for that at all, or just like pleasantly taken aback like oh my god i can't believe what i'm seeing my fantasy my dream come true like hisoka is having a wet dream while fully awake again gets a little weird pure orgasm noises but at least this is inside the context of combat and i can understand it better here hisoka is literally like keith ledger's joker he wants to see this side out of batman like remember those two scenes one in the interrogation room how much he enjoyed Batman beating the shit out of him, compromising his morals and his ethics and his standards. And two, remember on the street when Batman's coming straight toward him on his bat pod, bat blade, bat cycle, whatever the hell you want to call it. And the Joker is literally standing in the middle of the street, like mumbling under his breath, do it, do it. I want you to do it, do it. Because he wants Batman to break. He wants to see the hero kill him. He wants to see. Uh, him compromised and because then he would have won right here this is exactly what Hizoka wants out of Gon he wants Gon to come at him with everything he's got he wants to witness his opponent's maximum potential his peak strength peak agility peak endurance he wants Gon no holds barred no holding back he's both turned on by it but also in a way Proud to see that spirit out of Gon, that look on his face. Like in terms of combat, it's like seeing your kid ride a bike for the first time, no training wheels, or swimming, or a coach seeing his player score his first ever points in a game. I don't really know a good analogy here to describe what in my mind makes sense to me. Like he just literally loves and lusts to see a fighter reach this state, absent of hesitation and you just commit to see gone out to draw blood as much as he is here and he lusts for it because now he gets to build up too he gets to literally release himself set freely no inhibitions it's literally like the lust and passion that comes from say like the girl or guy you like you or you got the hots for making the first move on you and taking charge being the dominant one and you're building up all this lust and elation and excitement and then boom now it's your turn now now it's action that's what this is here going making the first move being the dominant one hisoka taking all the punches he's a masochist just like Gon, the pain fuels him. It drives him. It propels him. That's how I see it. He wants to take punch after punch after punch because he's converting that into fuel to explode on him. It's like the law of conservation of energy. All that energy being expelled by Gon is being reabsorbed by Hisoka. It's like an exothermic, endothermic reaction. Build it up, build it up, build it up. The angrier and more fierce Gon gets with every punch brings Hisoka to a higher and higher level of just pure ecstasy until Hisoka can literally not contain himself anymore to hold back. The pressure is too great for the confinements of his body and just destroy Gon in return. Nothing would be more satisfying for him than ruining Gon and defeating him and landing that hit on him when Gon is at his peak state. And so. He does. Ahsoka, again, with this mentorship attitude, he says, Gon, you must be more vigilant. Like exactly what someone like Wing would tell him. And he tells Gon to look to his right, and out of fucking nowhere, a huge piece of rubble gets hurled right to Gon's face. And Ahsoka's just like, oh, I meant my right. And that that just counts as the final hit, and Ahsoka wins. Gon didn't even notice Hisoka attached the other end of the bungee gum on his face to a piece of rubble. Had he not been so distracted and off his guard by needlessly and pointlessly arguing, debating with the ref, he would have seen it with his gyo, literally just like 
telling Gone, kid, you have to pay attention. You need to practice your discipline and your focus. You took your eyes off the prize. Like, it's all getting the better of you. You literally just lost due to your own faults. You know what I am. You know my personality. You know I'd lie and deceive and trick you. All that, along with making stupid rookie little kid mistakes, is of course going to cost you the match against someone like me. And that's essentially what happened here. That bungee going move, though, kind of confusing. How the hell is he able to detach his aura completely from himself? It's still attached to Gone, but he can move that shit around in free space and have the other end that was previously attached to his finger attached to that piece of rubber, uh, rubble. Is he literally utilizing manipulator techniques, even though they're very hard to learn with his class? That just didn't make much sense to me. But yeah, regardless, it just like shocks Gone that in that instant, the match was over right then and there. No climactic event, no triumph from him, no disastrous defeat even, no roar of the crowd, just Hizoka walking off stage like it was any other fight for him and Gone standing there shocked like he really just let that match end like that in that sort of defeat with one point he knew he had to prevent, but he let it happen anyways. And that sucks. But I think it means a lot for Hisoka to tell him he has made incredible progress. It's just that he lacks experience. Ten more fights and he could have stood a chance, but Hisoka will not fight him again here. And who knows how things go out in the real world. And I love how Gone in just a matter of seconds, goes from melancholy and despair back to his true self, telling himself, yeah, Soka is so far away from me in terms of skill, but he ain't out of reach. He needs more experience, and more importantly, he needs to develop his own techniques, find himself, hone in on those skill sets, and death come up with something that can fucking cut through bungee gum. Like, like God damn it, that needs to be priority number one. Make your hand a goddamn butcher knife of aura, okay? But like I said, the dynamic with Hizoka was the best part of this episode. I truly think he wants the best for Gone. Now that his fruit is ripe, he wants to harvest it well. It's not like a responsibility of his to guide Gone well, but just something he wants to genuinely do. He's compelled to do that. I really think Hizoka during this match was trying to teach Gone, fill him in on some basic lessons and guidance so that he can come out of this more aware. Like, one reason, he's one of his friends he wants to recruit to take down the Phantom Troop, no doubt, or some sort of involvement there. Fight with him or alongside him instead of against him. So why wouldn't you want him to be stronger and better prepared and skilled? Especially when you know you're a part of the Phantom Troop. You know who the members are. You know who you all are going to have to be going up against. Secondly... Hisoka knew he would win the match. It's like he just decided, you know, before we part ways, since I'll be going on to challenge a floor master and probably taking part in the Battle Olympia, you have no reason now to stay here because you fulfilled your goal and promised yourself giving me back my badge. We won't see each other for some time before we part after this. Why not at least drop some knowledge and teach you a bit? And that's exactly the case. We're done with Heaven's Arena. Gon and Killua accomplished what they came here to do and are leaving having gained so much more than they expected. They came to Heaven's Arena just to become stronger any way they can. Not only did they become physically stronger, but they learned fucking Nen from a Nen master, also a hunter, who was Gon's secret teacher this entire time. Killua learned the source of his brother's powers. They came to the arena to get Gon stronger to be able to fight Hizoka. Turns out Hizoka was here the entire time, so they are able to kill two birds with one stone. Gon returned the badge, so what's there left to do here? Hizoka refuses to fight Gon here again, only out in the real world with no rules or restrictions or lights or cameras or audiences. Gon is literally a hunter now too. Time for a new adventure. Moving on, also in hindsight, I didn't like the referee during the match, when now I can understand. I wasn't look at it, looking at it from a boxing or MMA perspective where the refs do this all the time. This ref knew it could get out of hand or get dangerous, get messy like Hisoka, could get intimate. Like, like not like either of them would have quit or given up. Like, 
Gon wasn't going to back down to Hizoka after like having his arm broken and a blade piercing the skin of his forehead from Hanzo and Hisoka witnessed that there is no way they were backing down. The ref knew it best to end the fight and end it as quickly as possible. And if it's to get to 10 point TKO, so be it. And I'll say that's the right call. Plus, you know what? Isn't that the first match Hizoka's ever had where the person he defeated didn't end up dead? Gon survived a loss to Hisoka. That has to mean something. And I want to know what that secret is that Gon knows from his match. Both Wing and Gon know, but he won't tell Killua. He just says it's a secret. So that's got me curious. I don't think I missed anything that would explain that to me, but you never know. I ain't perfect here. I will be sad to see us leave Zushi and Wing behind. I want to see them again, but I honestly doubt I will, which kind of bums me out. You can kind of tell when characters have exhausted their purpose for the story for the time being. Like, you can just tell when a character has reached the end of the line for direct story involvement, and they kind of fade back into the background, still existing in the universe, of course, but they're on retainer to return whenever appropriate. Like, considering we said bye to them, no discussion or reminder of the York New auction and that arc coming up, I doubt we're seeing them again. Bummer. Kind of got attached to them. I do want to see them again. For those of you who do know all of Hunter x Hunter and even read the current manga and know all of this information, do not spoil it for me, of course. I, I, don't tell me. I don't want to know that. I'm just articulating my thoughts, and I'm just saying you guys would have bigger feelings about this. I would hope to see them in some sort of time skip in the future. Like, if they don't appear again in all 100-and-something episodes remaining, nor did they show up in the manga that exists after the series, a time skip would be cool since he'd obviously be older as I assume all our characters would be I don't know I have no idea how much time takes place in the entire series and again don't tell me that that's a spoiler to me I just mean I'd like to see Zushi become a Nen master like at least mastering Hatsu and the and the water divination mastering the basics He's still Wing's student, but like the equivalent of a Krillin and Roshi. I imagine him becoming a floor master. That would be dope. And just wanting to see how he's developed. Like going to Killua are 1 in 10 million chances, sure. And Zushi is 1 in 100,000. But Zushi has learned Nen the proper and more promising way according to Wing. While they learned the other way. So if anything, Zushi's Nen capabilities should be quite powerful and maybe even balance out. I don't know. And should have some advantage having learned the more promising method. But yeah, can't get too attached to characters. Just something like that line from Zushi until we meet again. That always hits hard, you know? I've learned that from all my time across thousands of shows and movies. You can't get too attached. But I still, I still fail to not, and I always do. And I definitely have to make sure I stop getting attached for when I start Attack on Titan soon, or else I'm just emotionally fucked. Mistake number one, I hear, is going into Attack on Titan be being one that attaches themselves to characters. So we know our next adventure is returning to Gon's home on Whale Island. Our duo has to find their way onto a ship, which I don't think should be too hard, considering Gon is officially a hunter now and he can use his license now that he believes he's earned it. You got money out the ass, that of a corporation to pay for two fucking tickets, no problem, let alone all the money they both won while at the arena. Or just the fact he's a hunter and maybe you get a few free rides, you know, even though he has been advised to keep that under wraps, keep the information heavily, heavily protected. So maybe don't go telling everybody you're a hunter, but he can go home and for sure tell his aunt Mito and his grandmother. It'll be interesting to see their reactions because they'll, of course, both be happy to see him succeed, but probably emotional to seeing him follow his father's footsteps so closely, who abandoned him and will now be leaving them once again to go search for his father. So mixed emotions from there, I can imagine. But they'll get to meet his new best friend, Killua. That'll be cool. And I wonder if they know the Zuljic name. Maybe also keep that under wraps. But also an interesting dynamic I can predict seeing, like Killua witnessing a normal family for the first time. Just the thought that 
Gon could be missing his family, his family missing him, wanting to see his family. Those are all like foreign thoughts to him that make no sense to him. Kind of like how Gara in Naruto, it was such a foreign concept and thought behind love. That's what I see this almost like. Seeing smiles on family members' faces upon Gon's return. Seeing them hug and embrace each other. Maybe even Killua will get a hug. They all sit down at the table and eat together like a family, sharing stories and laughing and stuff. I'm sure there will be some things Killua has never witnessed or experienced before. Perhaps why he was happy to join Gon and meet his family. Maybe he's curious. I just hope Killua can refrain from being fickle and dishonest as a transmuter he is. We've seen tiny slivers of envy out of him. I hope it doesn't come out. I know it probably will at some point. You have to fulfill that prophecy somehow from his father Silva to make all of that make sense, but fingers crossed. But you know what's crazy? I've discussed so much here, yet I'm bothered because I can't help but feel like I'm leaving stuff out. There's like there's just there's subtle things on the tip of my tongue. I remembered or I've just thought of that I wanted to bring up and include and I just can't seem to recall them now and it's pissing me off. I can't even tell if I do indeed have any else anything else to add or if I'm actually crazy. Like oh, great. I'm going to end up recording this, ed edit the video, upload it and that's the moment when I'm going to remember what else I wanted to talk about in that. Like I feel like within all of the topics I discussed there's like a couple more really interesting points or connections I wanted to make and now I can't remember it. Fuck. I hate that. God damn it. Oh well, it'll just have to be said in the comments if I remember or maybe one of you guys will bring something interesting up that'll trigger that in my mind. But that's where I'm going to end the discussion here. If you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining, hitting the like button to let me know is awesome. Better yet, if you want to keep up with all future content from me, be sure to subscribe to stay in the loop. Keep the conversation going down in the comments below so I can connect with y'all more, build this community. Follow me on social media for my photography and a more personal side if you'd like. Having said all that, and with that said, so long, farewell, until next time. Thank you, be happy, and I hope you have a good one. Peace.